Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. Here we're going to be looking at how to use the tip or the shortcut factoring of difference of perfect squares to solve quadratic equations by factoring. If you remember difference of perfect squares, it will make your factoring problems a lot easier. Each one of these problems that we're going to be looking at is based on this difference of perfect squares shortcut. If you have something squared minus something else squared, then the factor method of that is a minus b times a plus b. The plus sign and the minus sign. Of course, they could be in different order. You put the plus sign first, minus sign first, doesn't matter. Okay, so let's go ahead and try it. You want to try to figure out what are the things being squared here. So in problem number one, the first thing being squared is x, second thing being squared is 9. So my factored form is going to look like x minus 9 times x plus 9. Then because of the zero product property, I'm going to set each factor equal to 0 and then solve for x. Here's another one. 4x squared equals 9. First thing I need to do is write this thing in standard form because always for factoring it needs to be written in standard form. Then the first thing that's being squared here is 2x and the second thing that's being squared here is 3. So I'm going to put that into my difference of perfect squares. 2x minus 3, 2x plus 3. Great, there's my factored form. Since the directions told me to solve, that means I need to get x equals. So I'm going to set each factor equal to 0 and then solve for x. A lot of times students get thrown off with the directions. They're not sure if they're supposed to um, go all the way to x equals something or just stop at factored form. And the directions are the key. If the directions say factor, I would have stopped here. But since the directions say solve, that means I need to have x equals something. So again, factor is there, solve, go all the way to there. Okay, let's try another one. Now this one, 4x squared minus 36 equals 0. If you're a pretty advanced factorer, you will look at this and right away notice there's a um, greatest common factor of 4. So you could factor that out. Then use difference of perfect squares. And then when you're doing the zero product property, you set each factor equal to 0. But when I have here 4 equals 0, that doesn't make any sense. Like that's not true, it doesn't help me find x, so I can just cross that out. My solutions come from the ones that do have x. Okay, so that's method one. Method two, let's pretend you didn't see that greatest common factor, but you recognize that it was a difference of perfect squares. You could factor this thing like 2x minus 6 times 2x plus 6, and then use the zero product property, and you'll get the same answer. Um, 2x equals 6, x is equal to 3, and here I'll have x equals negative 3. I'm going to skip a step there. Okay, the last one we're going to be looking at has x's and y's. So that's kind of scary, but it's still a difference of perfect squares. Difference meaning subtraction sign. And so I can factor this as x minus 2y times x plus 2y. Since the directions say solve for x, I can't stop there. What I've done so far is only the factoring bit. So solve for x means get x all by itself. So for this first one, I'm going to have x equals 2y. That's not too tricky. The second one, x is almost all by itself, x will be equal to negative 2y. So these examples are all showing you how to solve a quadratic equation using difference of perfect squares as a factoring technique. One last thing for you to notice is look at all the answers. They're all positive, negative, like buddy pairs. I have 9 and negative 9, 3 halves and negative 3 halves, 3 and negative 3, 2y and negative 2y. That will happen to your solutions when you have a difference of perfect squares by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it, work it. So if we had, no that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be, yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two picks. Yeah. <laughs>